Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. So today's topic is one that I've been asked a ton about because it seems to be in the news every now and then, and it's hydrogen. Now, to be specific, we're talking about transportation, mobility, energy, and so when we're talking about hydrogen, we're talking about fuel cells. Let's get into it. So what exactly is a hydrogen fuel cell? A hydrogen fuel cell is essentially a device which consists of a number of plates, also known as cells. So a fuel cell acts a lot like a battery. When you pass hydrogen gas through it, it generates electricity. Hydrogen fuel cells have a number of applications, some of which include power generation in a stationary sense. So for example, some companies will buy hydrogen fuel cells to power their campuses. Um, and then there's also a major mobility application where uh, you can put a hydrogen fuel cell inside of a vehicle, so a private car or a bus or a train, and then use hydrogen to generate power. Now, if you're wondering how that kind of architecture works, essentially what you have is some sort of hybrid system. So you'll have a fuel cell in the vehicle, you'll have hydrogen tanks, those hydrogen tanks fuel the fuel cell and they contain compressed hydrogen because hydrogen is really low density, obviously. Um, it's the lightest element and so uh, you can compress it a ton and so it's compressed into tanks and that's what allows a lot of it to be stored on a vehicle. You also have batteries and so what the batteries do is allow the fuel cell to charge them and then the batteries will run motors. Uh, this is typically because the fuel cell is going to be uh, providing a constant amount of power and so the batteries can then kind of uh, provide a variable amount of power to motors etc. The batteries are also super useful because when you're talking about a vehicle application, uh, a hydrogen-powered vehicle can have a lot of the benefits of a quote-unquote battery-powered vehicle because it still contains a battery in that you can still have things like regenerative braking since you do still have a battery in the vehicle. When a vehicle stops, you can still generate power from that, which is really useful because you cannot easily turn that into hydrogen to power the vehicle. Now, to be clear, hydrogen vehicles are still electric and I'm quite positive on them. They're zero emissions besides water vapor and oxygen and they kind of rely on a lot of the same technologies that traditional battery or electrified vehicles already rely on so there's a benefit in terms of just being able to integrate systems in different ways. Now I'm going to give you a few examples of vehicles in a bunch of different classes that use hydrogen technology. So in private cars, you have vehicles like the Toyota Mirai, which is a hydrogen fuel cell car. You also have the Hyundai Nexo, which is an SUV powered by hydrogen. The Mirai is a little older, the Nexo is newer. Now in terms of buses, we have a couple different models. It turns out New Flyer actually makes hydrogen buses, or at least they did in the past, and it was very cool as a Vancouver resident being able to see hydrogen buses operating up in Whistler starting around the 2010 Olympics and going on for a few years after, though that's unfortunately ceased. Toyota also recently unveiled a new bus, the Sora, which is going to be operating in Tokyo for the 2021 Summer Olympics. Uh, so that's really cool. It's cool to see like kind of some traditional automakers who still make buses and public transit vehicles and it's cool to see uh, a hydrogen powered bus. The Sora also looks really cool. It's worth looking at. And then in terms of rail vehicles, there's a couple options. So Alstom actually makes a version of their Lint multiple unit train. That's kind of a regional train. It's actually the same model that Ottawa operates on the Trillium line or line two. The Alstom Hydrogen Lint is called the I-Lint. It's painted blue, it looks cool, um, and some have been operating on regional routes uh, throughout Germany and other parts of Europe, which is really cool to see. Uh, the performance is pretty much the same as a regular Lint multiple unit train, which is exciting. As it turns out, Statler, who is the new provider of O-Train Line 2 vehicles, is actually uh, producing hydrogen-powered flirts, or at least kind of demo units for uh, operation in Southern California, so that's really cool as well. Now the problem with hydrogen is that currently there isn't great distribution infrastructure for it. Now, it's not that we couldn't build that distribution infrastructure, but the problem is when you compare it to something like battery electric or catenary electric trains, for example, or trolley buses or electric buses, it's a lot harder to make the business case for hydrogen when you don't have that baseline infrastructure. 
What kind of seems clear is that hydrogen vehicles have a lot of benefits, but the problem is that those benefits don't seem to be able to overcome the lack of infrastructure. See, if you're going to go buy a bunch of buses, hydrogen might be really good as an option, but if you can't actually refuel the buses, and if maintenance is hard and expensive, then you might just go for the battery option, even if the range is a little bit bad, and you're not so sure about how the technology is gonna work out, because at least with the battery option, you have the support, and you can charge a vehicle anywhere. Now, of course, battery vehicles require a ton of power, but the reality is that there's a lot of applications that require a lot of power right now, whereas there is not really any hydrogen distribution infrastructure. I mean, there are places you can get hydrogen in various areas, it's just that we don't have fueling stations everywhere, and indeed, unlike electric vehicles where you can just charge the vehicle at home, hydrogen vehicles are still going to require you to refuel them like gasoline vehicles. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but I think one of the kind of neat benefits of electric cars is that people can just charge them at home, which means that they don't need to worry about actually going to a station. It kind of changes the dynamic of how people use a private car, and I, I think it's kind of a, a nice change to that dynamic. Uh, and hydrogen kind of sticks more to the traditional model. Now there's benefits to that, but since we don't have a ton of infrastructure outside of Southern California and California in general, without that fueling infrastructure, Hydrogen vehicles are even more useless than battery electric vehicles like Teslas, Nissan Leafs, etc. Because at least with a Tesla or Nissan Leaf, in, in the worst case, you can just plug it in at any regular plug. But with a hydrogen vehicle, you can't. You need to put hydrogen in it. And from what I've seen, hydrogen refueling stations are super unreliable. It seems that a lot of them are often down in various places where they exist. And so that's a huge problem in terms of getting the infrastructure just at a baseline level so that people would actually consider using a hydrogen vehicle. Another major negative for hydrogen is that people kind of see it as a fuel, at least it's marketed that way, but hydrogen really isn't a fuel. It's more of an energy storage medium, at least if you want it to be environmentally friendly. A lot of hydrogen that we get right now comes from natural gas, which obviously isn't environmentally friendly. The problem is that if you actually want to generate hydrogen, it's quite inefficient. Now, of course, if you have a ton of extra renewable energy, for example, then perhaps making hydrogen does make sense. It's just not super efficient, and so this idea that because hydrogen is all over the, the place, we can just harness it for fuel means that it's environmentally friendly just isn't true. I know I've been negative about hydrogen so far, but I do want to talk about some of the positives. Now, the first positive I see is that at least if you're using it in a fleet or for something like a rail application, you have set fueling stations, you know where the vehicles are going to be, uh, the vehicles run on a schedule, so at least refueling can be a bit more practical than, for example, with private cars. If you're a public transit agency, you know, you have your depots, you can put refueling stations at the depots and then you're pretty much good, same with the rail application. So I think from that point of view, the infrastructure becomes a little less of an issue. However, that being said, when Whistler had its hydrogen buses, hydrogen was actually being trucked in from across the country to fuel them, and so even if you have that local fueling infrastructure, that doesn't necessarily mean you have the infrastructure necessary to produce the hydrogen, and so that kind of has to come at the same time. Now, there are other benefits to hydrogen though. As I mentioned, if you have a ton of excess renewable energy, while you could store it in batteries, hydrogen is a really nice option because you can store it and it will just sit there and it won't degrade, you can just store it in tanks and then when you need it later, you can use it. Uh, if we have a ton of wind and solar power that we're trying to bank ourselves on in the future, I think that using hydrogen as a storage medium might be a pretty good option, especially if you can use it directly in vehicles. Now, when it comes to vehicles, there's another major benefit over batteries, and that's that there's a quick refueling slash recharging time. With batteries, you, you literally have to recharge them, and recharging a battery is just not the same as filling up a tank. Filling up a tank doesn't take that much time, but recharging a battery requires kind of a, a curve to happen where you start at a really fast recharge rate, you slow down. Even if you're charging fast, charging a battery isn't that, isn't that fast on the whole. Now there are options for doing battery electric vehicles with really uh, fast battery swaps, but I think that that's a really complex solution and it doesn't seem like it's right now the priority. Of course the advantage here is that with hydrogen, 
you can refill a tank similar to how you'd refill a tank on a gasoline car in a couple of minutes. So that's a really attractive advantage when compared to a battery solution. Now, of course, another benefit of hydrogen, as I mentioned at the very beginning of the video, is that it can be used to generate power. Uh, and that generation of power can have a ton of different applications. And so as long as you have a ton of hydrogen stored, well, there's a lot of ways we could be using hydrogen fuel cells to power houses, etc. Say you have a hydrogen car, you could use that to power your house, and that's a pretty interesting application. The problem is just figuring out how we deal with the infrastructure of hydrogen, as well as getting the cost of the actual fuel cells and the vehicles down. It turns out that battery costs are falling precipitously, and the same can't really be said for hydrogen fuel cells. The costs are definitely falling, to be clear. Uh, hydrogen cars have actually been around for a long time, uh, and the cost of the fuel cells is typically one of the biggest issues, and clearly the costs have fallen a lot since the Toyota Mirai, for example, is available as a product you can actually purchase, whereas previous hydrogen cars that were out in the early 2000s were kind of a lease option. So you had to lease the car because it was worth so much money that you, you wouldn't really be able to purchase it. So it's exciting to see that hydrogen cars are now, you know, progressing and now they're sem semi-affordable. Uh, the problem is that battery electric vehicles are already getting to like mainstream affordability levels. And so we'll have to see where hydrogen goes. Of course, with all this in mind though, it's positive anyways, because as I mentioned before, there's a lot of crossover between hybrid technology and battery electric vehicle technology and hydrogen technology. And so the fact that hybrid technology has improved is part of why hydrogen vehicles have been able to improve because the battery tech is better, etc. And so it's kind of a case where a rising tide is gonna lift all boats. And so I'm pretty optimistic for the future. I think hydrogen's application for rail is probably somewhat niche, but I still think that it's really important in reducing our overall carbon footprint. I don't necessarily think a system like Go Transit in the Greater Toronto area uh, should en masse use hydrogen, because I think that when you have these really uh, heavily used urban lines, I think catenary uh, as an investment makes a lot of sense. But perhaps on commuter routes as well as regional or rural routes, hydrogen makes a lot of sense. I think in Canada the perfect trial environment for a hydrogen train would be O-Train Line 2. Especially since, disappointingly, it's not currently being electrified. It's getting new trains, Stadler flirts, uh, but again not being electrified. So I think it would be really cool to see it go semi-zero emissions with one of those hydrogen flirt trains and then if it works out in the future that line could be fully electric via hydrogen which would be really cool. Anyways thanks for watching the video guys. If you have any questions about hydrogen leave them down in the comments below and as always thanks for watching.